So the suspense is over. Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli return to India's T20I squad. What can we assume from this? Uh, what are the reasons behind the selectors going back to Rohit and Kohli for T20I cricket? And what are the pros and cons? What does this mean for some of the other players and other takeaways from this squad for the Afghanistan series? Like, let's get cracking. Rohit Sharma first up. I think first and foremost, there is a clear vacuum as far as viable leadership options go for the Indian T20I side. Given the longest-term injuries to Hardik Pandya and Surya Kumar Yadav, uh, in, India needed or the selectors would have certainly needed a viable candidate who they can build the team around as leader. Jaspreet Bumrah's immense value as a player and the need to manage his workload kind of rules him out for that. You don't want to be naming Bumrah as captain and therefore having to play him in this series when there's a big home season and an IPL and a World Cup coming up. So Rohit Sharma returns as captain. I think that has been a really important point because of the options for captaincy that seem slim. Is that still a good way to think about it? And does Rohit Sharma, the batter, still add value? Well, I think a number of cricketers have said this over the years. Nothing more than form and fitness that matters in T20 cricket. There is no doubt that the immense form that Rohit Sharma showed in the ODI World Cup, so too Virat Kohli, have contributed to this decision. It makes it so much harder to leave them out when they are batting so well. And the style of Rohit's batting, even though it was a different format, just tempts you into thinking he could be as dangerous, as destructive in the shorter format. Is that wise, wise thinking, though? Is that sensible? It's a different format completely. Uh, we have seen Rohit Sharma get stuck and struggle and be out of form in the T20 format. It has happened in the IPL. It happened uh, as recently as the last T20 Men's World Cup. So they're clearly going with the evidence of the most recent white ball ICC uh, event. And they're saying Rohit Sharma can bat that way. He's batting well enough. And he's obviously an experienced captain. So that's that's where Rohit works. It's harder to pick one of Rohit and Kohli and not the other, especially when both are in form. And we mustn't forget Kohli was India's leading run scorer at the last T20 World Cup. Uh, played the kind of innings perhaps only he can in the game against Pakistan. But there still remain concerns about Kohli, the T20I batter, especially when India bat first, like they did in the semi-final. And the matchups against spin, when he has to have a power game and take spin down. The other challenge here with Kohli is, if he is going to play, he has to bat at three, which means Surya Kumar Yadav bats four. If India gets starts and it's the eighth or ninth over, you want Surya Kumar Yadav then in. And that makes Kohli's position, especially when India bat first, slightly challenging. The flexibility is kind of robbed if Kohli plays in the T20I team again. The pros for Kohli, again, incredible form, no doubt about fitness. And just with the way you see him bat, even in Test cricket now in South Africa, it seems like a fluency, a freedom, a swagger has returned to his game. These were the two formats, though, that best suited his game, Test and ODI cricket. If there was a conflict in Kohli's approach or Kohli's form or Kohli's impact, in any one of the three international formats, it was always T20I cricket. So there, there lies the immensely difficult decision in front of the selectors. Personally, I would have liked for them to have gone with the younger players that they had invested their time in. But they are also worried about too much youth, perhaps, at the next uh, T20 World Cup. And they do not have enough T20Is, given all the focus was on ODI cricket because of the last World Cup, to actually give people a decent run uh, then have them battle hardened for a, for a T20 World Cup. The IPL may only add to the confusion, but picking a team just on the basis of the IPL for the World Cup immediately after is tough. So therein lies the Rohit Kohli uh, conundrum. They're both back. What I'd like to see is if Rohit Sharma can replicate the impact in 50 over cricket to 20 over cricket, where bowlers are obviously more prepared to get hit, where the power plays only six overs. That's something that I'm waiting to see. It's not like the Afghanistan series will tell us that, but the IPL uh, beyond that is going to be a test for Rohit Sharma. What I'd like to see from Virat Kohli is we, if we see a different Virat Kohli, if he buys into a slightly different philosophy where he where oppositions do not use spin to keep him quiet or bog him down, can he bat at the same tempo, batting first, as he does when the game's in front of him when he's chasing? All questions that will be answered will be just see more of the same that has at times let India down in the crunch game, in the semis and the finals of ICC T20 World Cups. So that is the Kohli-Rohit situation. What does that mean for some of the other players? It clearly means that Shubman Gill, in my opinion, is now a reserve T20 batter, which we didn't think possible after the IPL that he had. Jaiswal, I'd like to see Jaiswal and Rohit partner at the top because the right-left-hand combination is something India missed immensely at the last World Cup. And it is just 
so important to have left-handers in your T20 team to counter matchups that the opposition are preparing to get, to, to to bog you down with. So Rinku saying Tilak Verma and Jaiswal before those two become such important players. I just do not see them going away from Jaiswal. So I hope Rohit and Jaiswal, which is a really exciting prospect, open against Afghanistan. And the Jaiswal is told point blank, you're our guy, but for injury, you will be in that team sheet. Tilak Verma is an interesting one. Whether the selectors are looking at Tilak as a bowling option seems less and less likely given whichever captain he plays under gives him very little bowling time. Will that change under Rohit Sharma, who has captained him for the moment in the past? And again, to add to the drama, won't be doing it this time. We'll wait and see. But it does seem like he could be the casualty from the squad once Surya's fit and if Hardik's back, then Tilak and Rinku might be competing for one spot and Rinku has just taken his chances with zero doubt, shown so much conviction in the way he's batted and been super batting first and batting second. He also plays lower down the order. So that becomes something in Rinku's favour. What works against Rinku, of course, is that he's a one-dimensional player and that Tilak, at least on paper, is two. But we've seen no evidence of that. So Tilak Parma is someone that might well miss out. Shreyas Ayer, I think, has missed out because I don't see how India can play Shreyas as well as a Kohli and then have the left-handers they want for the flexibility that they want to take to the World Cup. So I think we might not see Shreyas Iyer make the cut here. The Shubman Gill as a reserve opener story is big in itself and he might come in only now if one of the first two openers has a serious slump of form or is injured. An important player in this is Shivam Dubey. Uh, Dubey gives them another left-hand option, a proper counter to spinners, which Afghanistan will present as a threat. And he could be the man to play Hardik Pandya's role if Hardik Pandya is not fit. It's not the same as far as bowling goes, but will Roy Sharma trust Shivam Dubey more with the ball in this series? And will MS Dhoni trust him at all, which seems unlikely with the impact player in the IPL? So we get to see Dubey the bowler. Dubey the batter is vastly improved. He needs to make sure that skill set doesn't drop if he's being looked at and groomed as more of an, a seam bowling all round option. So that's something that we shall wait and see. This is a really tough time to pick a team. And I think this is still not indicative either way of whether these will be the players for the T20 World Cup or not. We may very well see a lot changing from now and then, looking at players' form and fitness in the IPL. Uh, but I think the selectors have just kept all their options open here. If they want to go to a Virat Kohli, they've at least brought him back into the scheme of things and will monitor him to the IPL. What will you learn of a Virat Kohli? Could you not have just left him out and given the series to somebody like Shubman Gill or Shreya Sair? Uh, and just brought Kohli back if the situation demanded it later. That is a question that is valid. But I think they we might see a different Kohli. We might see him buy into a philosophy that the team wants him to play at. And we shall see if that is indeed the case. So, all eyes on what this three-match series that suddenly has assumed so much significance because of the return of Rohit and Kohli goes. But I do think Rohit Sharma will now captain India at the T20 World Cup because he's been brought back exactly for that. They do not want to leave themselves with doubt or, or uncertainty over Hardik Pandya's fitness. And if Hardik does return and Rohit has a serious slump of form, that's something we can see. But right now, it looks like Rohit is very much back. And as a result of Rohit back, so too is Kohli. Whether or not it's the right decision, time will tell. And yes, there is the experience of not having gone over the finish line at previous ICC T20 World Cups. But form, recent form, should trump most and all of that. And fitness certainly doesn't seem to be a question for these two players at the moment. Uh, we shall see if this proves to be a step in the right direction going forward or a step that the management and the selectors missed where they could have gone forward, but they've actually taken a step back.